Okay, hi everybody, welcome back. Um, I've been doing these live videos on uh, Instagram and uh, got a lot of requests to do them on YouTube. So here we are on YouTube. Um, we'll do our first one. Today we're going to be talking about the uh, uh, ACSS Microdot. And uh, we'll be covering pretty much all the optics we carry and I'll kind of go through them and explain the advantages, disadvantages. Uh, strength and weaknesses to each optic and uh, what you should be looking at and uh, what application what weapon system and so on you, you should be using them so uh, we got a 16 inch arrow precision this is uh, essentially you know your your basic AR that most people will shoot uh, 16 inch tends to be the most common uh, most of the ACSS stuff will match anything from a 20 inch to a 14 and a half uh, and that will vary per zero. So we, we show different zeros that you can use. Uh, we also show you, uh, you know, depending on your uh, altitude, uh, I mean your elevation, how you should zero the optic in because you will have a different trajectory. So uh, the ACSS Micro, these retail a little bit over 200 bucks. And uh, this particular one, they have a T1 base, so you can use any kind of T1 uh, mount I'm using uh, an aero precision here I mean I'm sorry uh, an American defense weird I can't see your guys' comments you guys commenting I can't tell if anybody's on there please post something so I could see because I'm not seeing any of the comments uh, how do you do it show live chat why isn't it showing it there it goes okay so uh, compatible with all the uh, T1 bases, so uh, I like the American Defense. These are uh, uh, probably my favorite overall. Uh, I've had I've ran a few on different optics, not just the micro, and they seem to hold very very well. Um, so lightweight, this thing is uh, tiny. I mean, it's not even. Uh, you, you don't even know it's on the gun, which is pretty neat because weight-wise, you know, there's some uh, pretty heavy optics out there. Uh, it has the ACSS reticle in it. If you guys aren't familiar with that, it's a chevron that's uh, range estimating center mass, kind of like an ACOG on an RCO. The chevron is the same size as a, a, a torso at uh, 300 on the outer part and inner part is 400. And then it's got bullet drop compensation out to 600 yards that is calibrated for 5.56. Five, uh, you can also match it into 308 by going about one inch high at 100 yards and uh, it will line up the rest of your uh, trajectory. Uh, will this work for people with astigmatism? <sighs> That's kind of tough because uh, I've heard some people with astigmatism say they can see it clear. I've heard other people say that it looks like a straight line. Uh, a lot of people get this thing and they look across the room and they say, oh, it looks blurry. Well, it's not designed to be looked across the room, or at least the BDC portion. If you're shooting across the room, there's a large uh, open donut and chevron tip, and that's what you use 0 to 300. It's just that. So it's designed to be very fast up close, but then have the ability to reach further out to 6. Um, if you're shooting further out, or if you want to see the dots further out, actually look outside at the distances that you would be shooting and you'll notice everything will clear up for you. Uh, I highly recommend them with the 3X magnifier behind it. That really brings it into its own and medium range. Uh, this combination here is amazing. Uh, I'll, I have that in an American Defense Quick Detach as well. So typically what I'll do is I'll have this off and uh, I'll be using it more like a monocular kind of scanning like if we're hunting or something. I'll be uh, looking around the area, and then if I see something, then I, I slap it on, kind of thing. So, uh, then we get into battery life. This thing has about 50,000 hours. They list 10,000, but what they mean by 10,000, they mean at super bright level uh, on mode A, meaning both the, the horseshoe and chevron, at nuclear blast 24 seven. But that's not how you use it. You would end up in a medium setting and the dot, the dot itself has auto on, auto off. So if I lay the weapon down and don't touch it for, I don't know, like seven minutes or so, it turns off. And then as soon as I touch it, it turns back on. So because of that, it conserves a lot of battery life. 
uh, at 50,000 hours on a medium setting only used when you use it if you did the math behind it and say you're doing an eight-hour shift uh, you're looking at 17 years of battery life plus so the battery life is insane uh, extremely durable there's been all kinds of torture tests on these if you guys follow AK operators union uh, Rob is really mean to these things uh, mr. guns and gear did a, a meltdown he fired uh, oh god I don't even know how many rounds and cooked these things uh, one ended up failing on him eventually but to be able to handle that is amazing if you, uh, you know, think of a t1 as being like a 10 this thing would be like an 8 in durability it's hard to beat for the money. Uh, waterproof, shockproof, you can mount this on a shotgun and it will continue to hold zero for you. So uh, in my humble opinion, best bang for the buck by far. And I can tell you in our, in our testing in medium range, this easily outperforms every, any dot I've seen so far. You know, once you start going past 300, uh, this thing really comes into its own. And uh, that's about it. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments on this thing, feel free to post. I figured I'd try to keep it kind of short. <clears throat> there we go. There's the comments. Okay, first one, nice. <laughs> Second, will you please make a 300 Win Mag ACSS HUD? Yeah, it's it's in the works. Red Sky, hello. Three of us make the four of us here. Okay, hi. Okay, 10 of us. Is the reticle hard to see without a magnifier? Um, not to me. If you have good eyesight, you can easily make it out. It's uh, where, where people have a problem is, is when they turn it on full blast and they're looking indoors. If you, if you get it to the right setting and you're outside and you're actually looking at the proper distances, I have no problem. There's a lot of video, you guys, on this. If you check out uh, Mixflip, he came out with me and we, we went and shot. I didn't even know he was recording. And, uh, you know, I'm hitting 600 yards with this thing without a magnifier. So I hope that helps you there. Will this work with people with astigmatism? I think we, we uh, covered that. ACS is brilliant. Thank you. There are ACSS prisms for the people with astigmatism. Yeah, there is, you guys. We have a 3X, a 5X. There's a 2.5X as well. Uh, a laser etched reticle is really what you should be looking at. You can also get into the 1x6s, 1x8s. I bought one thinking of getting one for my 870 12 gauge. Yeah, the neat thing we guys with a shotgun is the uh, outer donut is designed to uh, have the shotgun pattern out of a tactical shotgun like an 870, a Mossberg 500 with a smooth bore, and you're shooting double lot buck. That outer portion, that outer ring, will equate to. Uh, the pattern at 25 meters um, and then if you if you dial in a one ounce slug at 25 yards it ends up bullet drop drop compensating out to 150 so we actually show the drop for the slug so it, it's pretty sweet on a shotgun it's like the ideal uh, optic if you will can yeah I have one uh, one of the prism scopes great value for the money yeah you guys our prisms are pretty sweet had a primary arms advanced red dot for almost two years. I've left the battery on more than a couple of times, longer than a month, and still great. Uh, you shouldn't turn it off, man. Just leave that thing on. It should be on 24-7. Don't worry about the battery. Uh, every four years, just swap it out, you know? That's a big claim on durability. Yeah, I mean, I'm not uh, I'm not claiming it. You can you could see the reviews. I mean, you can go on there and see all this stuff. There's a guy from uh, Truck and Guns, and he did a... a pretty gnarly torture test he threw it in the uh, in the water he they shot it with a shotgun they ran it over they did all kinds of crazy they stuck it in the microwave they, they did a bunch of crazy stuff and we posted that you can actually uh, find some of that stuff especially if you follow me on Instagram you'll, you'll see a lot of that I've ran about a hundred and fifteen hundred plus rounds and still held zero all my friends who are aim point owners complimented and vowed about the price yeah, you guys, you know, I'm not saying this thing is a, is a T1. You know, T1s are extremely durable. They're like overbuilt. Uh, the problem with those is you're only left with one dot. So if you're going into a medium range, especially unknown distance, you're very limited to about 300 yards on a prone size target. That's, that's really where it ends. Uh, with this, you can reach out to 600 and actually be hitting. So a big advantage in medium range. 
Awesome, thank you, love the ACSS. I'm putting one, everything I have. <laughs> yeah, compared to the one by six Gen 2 with ACSS. Uh, the one by six would, would uh, beat this thing out in uh, medium range. I think up close, this would probably be a little bit quicker. Uh, where this would come into its own is the battery life and uh, the fact that it's so light. You know, that there's a very small package uh, the 1x6 is designed to be fast up close, but really does a lot of its work in medium range. It, it truly is, uh, you know, something to, to, to look at in meter range. It, it definitely uh, dominates that. I have $10 Chinese sight on my AR. Ooh. Will we see some mid-tiered scopes with ACSS, Leopold, VXR, and some... Yeah, you will. There's there's going to be some stuff coming out. We also have the Platinum stuff. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that. But our Platinum 1x8 is... Uh, it, it's coming out of the same factories that Leopold, Trijicon, Night 4... You know, everybody kind of uses out of Japan. So, uh, can't really... For the money, it's crazy what you get. We eliminate a lot of the middleman and the extra pricing and so on that companies add on. Uh, we figured if we give you guys a, a great optic, a lifetime warranty on it too, uh, you know, you're happy, we're happy we have a new customer, you're going to buy other stuff, you're going to buy uppers. I mean, look at all the cells and stuff we have, right? We all kind of tune in. I delete them. I can't look at them because then I start buying stuff, right? And my wife's like, what the hell is going on here? So I could use an optic. Thank you. All right, you guys. Well, if you have any other questions on this thing, uh, comments, let me know. Um, this thing has ended up in a lot of my guns. Uh, I run it from uh, AK-74s to ARs to a shotgun. Uh, we also show a drop for, uh, like if you go into a 22, we show how it lines up. It, you know, it, it's going to be a hair off. Like say you're aiming here, it's going to hit there. But at further distances with a 22, you're not going to notice that uh, small of an error. <clears throat> Thank you, Prime I also bought the ACSS HUD 4x14 HUD for my 308, and what a great value and great accuracy, in my opinion, as a beginner. Yeah, you guys, the what he's talking about is the 4x14 HUD DMR. If you own a 308, that is definitely the way to go. That thing is uh, pretty scary what it can do. And uh, unknown distance in windy conditions. Uh, even going after movers that are unknown distance, uh, this thing has proven to be uh, uh, by far the, the the best DMR design. Uh, you know, we we've sent off a, a few samples. If you guys don't know the history between between the AC, uh, as far as the ACSS, it uh, comes from operational studies. We talked to a lot of Marines, we talked to a lot of Army, a lot of infantry, a lot of sniper, a lot of master sniper instructors, a lot of competitors. And uh, it all boiled down to range estimation. And in a combative sense, nobody presents themselves on a known distance and tells you, hey, I'm, you know, 500 yards out. So built-in range finders and reticles is the, uh, is the key. Uh, the Russians first started that with a PSO-1. It's a, it's a pre-milled system. So that's kind of the grandfather of the ACSS. The ACSS is basically that concept, but brought to you, you know, in 2017. So it's uh, far superior. It has all the wind marks. It's got the uh, the mill system still in it for it, uh, complete firing solutions, and uh, all all the different auto ranging and different parts of the body, and uh, correlated with the bullet drop compensation. It's based on LR one one eight. So if you're shooting a hundred and seventy five grainer from twenty six fifty to twenty six hundred, you're going to be like right on. Uh, anything below that, we show you how to zero it to where you'll, you'll be on. And some of the yardage will be like a hair up or a hair low, but your center mass will be there and it will be math free. And that's really the name of the game. Uh, you can always dial in an, an, an exact firing solution, but those take time. You have to use a laser range finder. You got to do all your environmentals. So it's like, it's like a dual part reticle, fast, accurate, on the fly, math free shooting and having the ability to sit there and do the math. What mount was that? Uh, this one is an American Defense mount on both. You all are doing great work, thanks. Thank you guys. I really, really want a variable power prism scope like an LCAN, but with the ACSS. I love my 3X so much, I think the LCAN would be the bomb. Yeah, that would be cool, but uh, the price range would be crazy. 
Um, there's been talks with LCAN that we've talked about doing an ACSS. Uh, we did do a couple with Trigicon. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the uh, Trigicon TA31 ACSS and the Trigicon TA44 ACSS. Uh, those have uh, sold that record. We, we, we've never sold, uh, you know, the ACOGs have never sold that much before. Those things are going like crazy, and rightfully so. I mean, the, the hit ratio is getting about 25% in unknown distance and in windy conditions. If any of you guys shoot further out, you know you're never aiming exactly dead center. The wind always blows you off to the left, to the right, and you end up holding on the wind marks. Are there more ACOGs in the works with ACSS reticle? Yes. Um, we're going to be working on stuff. We're trying to figure out what models to go with. Um, I can't really get into the specifics of which one we're, we're uh, looking at. But uh, yeah, there, there will be more stuff coming. All right, you guys. Well, thanks for tuning in. I'm going to start doing more of these. Uh, we're going to get into not only the different optics, but I'm going to try to start sharing some of the techniques and kind of how you should be setting up your gun, what you should be looking for. Uh, and most of the stuff we're going to cover is going to be more in a combative type sense. It's not going to be for, you know, three gunning and that kind of thing. Um, none of the stuff I'm into is really sport. You know, it's all, it's all kind of, uh, if you guys don't know, uh, you know, as far as my background, uh, I was involved in mixed martial arts for on and off for about 20 years, and uh, yeah, I got injured pretty pretty good. Stuff hurts, so uh, eventually I went into shooting because I, I couldn't really do it anymore. And uh, getting into shooting, I kind of applied the same principles of uh, take what works and blend it together and get rid of all the BS, trim the fat, and let's get down to efficiency. And that's how the ACSS was born, as we started researching and, and piecing this thing together so uh, to me it's just an extension of that it's it's essentially literally the same thing uh, I believe the math is the greatest weapon of them all and if you're able to understand math and know what the parameters are what the trajectory is what you should be ranging uh, how the wind affects the trajectory and you combine that uh, you truly have a, a revolutionary type system so that's what we've sought out to create. I, I personally did not see anything out there that met my needs. And that's kind of how this whole thing started. So, all right, you guys, thank you for tuning in. And uh, we'll, uh, I'll do another one. My first day out, 1,000 yard range where we had consistent 10 mile an hour winds. And I hit steel at 500 first three shots out of five. Being honest, that was my first time using that scope 4x14 HUD. Awesome. Take it further out, man. You know, calibrate it. Once you, even in extreme long range shooting, you guys, a lot of people don't know, you still have to calibrate the BC. There's still a lot of uh, stuff that you gotta do. So get it to where you're hitting five, right? Go to six, go to seven, go to eight, and see where you're at, and, and know your, your minute adjustment. Uh, typically, a lot of people don't know, we, we entered the Chris Kyle Sniper Comp last year with a, with a $279 optic on an AR-10, and uh, if you guys, you know, if you guys know Chris Kyle, the people that showed up were no joke. You know, you're talking about seals and rangers and snipers and you know, top-end dudes, and uh, came from insane accuracy, uh, made it all the way through into the finals. Um, we ended up losing to uh, oh, what is that thing called? Uh, AccuTrack, AccuPoint, TrackPoint. It's like a computer-assisted uh, optic that is uh, married to the rifle. So when you pull the trigger, it doesn't shoot. It has to line up the two beams and, and the, the computer basically does all the work for you. So, uh, you know, we lost to that, which, hey, you know, <laughs> you're, you're, going up, you're going up against a computer. So uh, we're, we're, we're very proud for making it into the finals. I mean, you gotta understand, we, we beat out rigs that are like 30 grand, you know, with some of the top optics in the world. And uh, there we went with a $279 scope. Uh, the secret, the, the, the black magic, if you will, is in the reticle. The, the way we design the reticle and the way we check it to make sure that all the minutes of angle are exactly how they should be uh, is uh, the key. These things come out 100%. I don't mess around, you guys. These things have to be dead on before we actually say, yes, this is right, and then start to manufacture it. So, 
while using the windage in the HUD ACSS scope. Yeah, you, you have to use the wind. You start shooting further out, you guys. Pay attention to the wind. See this piece of yarn here? I use this to give me the wind reading. And people will say, well, that's the wind, wind, wind reading at your location, not at the target. Well, the wind at my location will affect the round much more than at the target area. Okay, if you, if you shot and you got wind the first 300 yards or 400, whatever, and that round gets pushed off at, uh, at 400, a five, only a five mile an hour wind will push you from here to here. So if you're off nine inches at 400 and now you're gonna shoot out to a thousand, just imagine what will happen. It's gonna take you way off. So it's very important you pay attention to the wind uh, at your location. Uh, at the target area, you're looking at it. So I could see what's happening down there. I could see the mirage, I can see stuff moving around. And uh, between the two, I can put together a firing solution. Your, your, your head is pretty good at figuring those things out. Uh, that an experience, you gotta get some rounds down range. So, all right, you guys, thanks for tuning in. And uh, I'll, I'll try to do more of these. And uh, if you guys have any comments, any questions, feel free to post and I'll, I'll try to answer them the best I can. Uh, Google ACSS or go to primaryarms.com and search ACSS. Uh, this is a joint effort between us and Halo Sun, and you, you'll see this uh, little red dot here. Highly, highly recommend this thing. All right, you guys, thanks for tuning in.